Healthcare services are being swept over by technological advancements, telling us how to live well given the constraints of time, resources and hazards of modern day living. From emergency rooms going wireless to robotic surgeries to genome mapping, technological inventions are revolutionizing health services and saving lives. And in this constantly changing scenario, I'm pressing the pause button to stop and understand how it's all working together in improving our lives. Welcome to Manipal Hospital presents Changing Face of Medicine. Sequencing technology in the field of genetics and genome biology have revolutionized treatments related to cancer, prenatal testing and effective detection of genetic mutations. Genetic disorders and abnormalities that show up during pregnancies leave the patient, even with a family history, clueless as to how to deal with such a situation, often leaving them with no other option but to terminate the pregnancy. We have several of our patients who come with their families who are referred to us because they have one member or their child is affected or there's a family history of lots of neurological disorders and they're worried whether they will be affected or you know even breast cancer for example that uh, their mother has breast cancer and then the daughters are very scared now so they want to know whether they are at risk of having the same uh, you know abnormality or the gene mutation she is my elder sister who is pregnant right now okay. rajni 32 is son. visiting the department my of genetics at manipal issues. to get a better understanding yes, of the implications that her unborn child has owing to the genetic abnormality that her firstborn carries so this child has a condition called lamellar ichthyosis now this is a genetic disorder which is inherited in an autosomal recessive way that means that this child has both the copies of the genes are mutated and the parents are normal but they carry one copy of the gene which is mutated and the other gene is normal so every time they have a child they if they both give the abnormal gene they can have a child who is affected again with the human genome project sequencing of this uh, human genome we have a new cutting edge technology called the next generation sequencing and with this we can sequence whole genes single gene or exome sequencing or whole genome sequencing so the entire gene can be sequenced we are going to offer the, her the chorionic villus sampling at uh, and take a little bit of the fetal tissue and test this fetus for the same mutation which her first child is carrying and if it is carrying the same mutation the choice is theirs so they are able to make an informed choice about the future of their pregnancy when we talk about modern technology robotics come to our minds and the use of robotic sciences in medicine has ensured that most complex surgeries are now handled more efficiently In cancer cases, patients who have to undergo surgery, the difficulty of losing an affected organ is ever-present. But with the robo-assisted surgery, this can be avoided effectively, just like in the case of Mr. Ramanathan. I was diagnosed with a tumour in the left kidney. They said that uh, to get it done in Bangalore, options are three, either an open surgery uh, where you have a bigger cut in your abdomen or you need to go in with a laparoscopic surgery or you can go for robotic assisted surgery which is done in Manipal hospital. So when they explained the benefits of uh, the robotic assisted surgery, it uh, became fairly clear the choice was simple. The real name for robotic surgery is robot assisted surgery. The robot is a device which is used by the surgeon to perform the surgery. The main preconception that the robot does the surgery is not true. It is a surgeon controlled robotics. The surgeon uses the robot to perform the surgery. The traditional way of doing the surgery for a kidney tumour was to make a big cut in the tummy 
and then taking the kidney the whole kidney out that is a quite a complex operation where you want to preserve the kidney at the same time remove the tumor which is a, which is a type of a cancer and how to do that with a minimal invasion that is without making a big cut and this is where the robot has really come into into great use and uh, we are able to remove many tumors from the kidney uh, thereby preserving the kidney and leaving it intact so that it has benefit for the patient by using a multifaceted robot this state of the art technology enables the doctor to execute complicated and long drawn procedures with utmost precision as compared to an open surgery uh, with the robot what happens is uh, the technology allows us to do a precision surgery uh, the forehand robotic with uh, endoris technology and a hugely magnified 3d video very very stable platform and a surgeon sitting comfortably on a chair and then doing very fast so all these combined together uh, makes us do a complex cancer surgeries do at a short time with the negligible pain to the patient with minimal blood loss and a very good cancer clearance and a fantastic outcome and quality of life. In my case, I chose robotic for two reasons. One was like everybody, you know, the, when I spoke to the doctor, he said it's going to be very, you know, easy on your body. You will not feel the pain. And uh, uh, the second reason was uh, my tumor was very, very close to a part where, you know, uh, a very precise operation was needed very very to uh, you know the, to the point of few me mm's so when he said that i need to do robotics only because we need to save a, a certain part of your body we don't want we don't want you to live with a bag and attachment on your body for the whole life you know and that was a major decision so i decided to go for this in addition to the robotic technology manipal hospitals has also been using the hypec technology for a sustained treatment of patients coming in at extreme stages of cancer. You see that in India, unfortunately, uh, the uterine cancers, the colon cancers, the ovarian cancers, and then something called a pseudomyxoma, mesothelioma, they all come to us when it has spread everywhere in the tummy in advanced stage, third or fourth, where there is no cure possible. So there is a technology called as HIPEC, that is a hyperthermic intraperitoneal chemotherapy. The case of Mr. Shravan Kumar Lat who was detected with a later stage of stomach cancer, had to undergo a high-peck surgery owing to the complex nature of his cancer. He had a peculiar condition called uh, pseudomyxoma peritoni, where it was all spread everywhere in the tummy with multiple nodules. I explained to him that uh, surgery alone will not cure you, but I'll do this high-peck for you. And uh, we went back and did the surgery, we cleared all his cancer, we put back this pump machine and cleared and circulated the cancer at 42 degrees centigrade with a special fluid. Today it is one year, he walks back and he's a businessman, he sits in the shop whole day, he's so active and healthy. Had we didn't have this technology called HIPEC, it would have been impossible to cure him by any amount of surgery or IV chemotherapy. Time travel is a reality now. Take for instance wearable technology or a health app on your mobile phone. We are now transferring information related to our health to our doctor who may be sitting miles away from us. So it's not just about shrinking distances, it's also about forecasting your health report card. Wearable devices are one of those innovations in technology which have had a huge impact on healthcare services. A number of medical devices are now becoming wearable including glucose monitors, ECG monitors, pulse oximeters and blood pressure monitors. And the role of such devices to track and monitor chronic diseases is also gaining momentum. As is in the case of this remote sensing device available for an all-round fetal monitoring. Using this is simple. Just by attaching electrodes on their bodies, expectant mothers can easily track the movements and other vitals of a growing fetus and share this information through smartphones and tablets. Electronic fetal monitoring, the variable technology has helped us in promoting the remote control uh, uh, fetal monitoring wherein we uh, use the um, same electrodes, uh, we teach the patient how to use them on herself and we can get a tracing on our smartphones or on tablets so that the patient carries with it to her house and monitors at least two to three times a day. This way, we are able to continue pregnancies. 
people with high risk pregnancies, people with feeling of decreased movements, previous intrauterine deaths are all candidates who can use this. They can be comfortable, we can rest in peace that the babies are fine. Some of these solutions truly put into perspective the use of modern technology in medicine today. But I believe we have only scratched the surface when it comes to this subject. Let's slip into a short break and explore more when we come back. Welcome back to Manipal Hospital presents Changing Face of Medicine. May I now introduce you to Dr. Ajay Bakshi. He is MD and CEO of Manipal Hospitals and we are trying to understand from him the dynamics of running a multi-speciality hospital. Morning Dr. Bakshi. Hi, good morning. How, how are you? you? I'm doing well. Having a busy day? Yes, we're just reviewing some patients. Okay. I'm going to borrow him for some time. Sure. Yeah. So, Doctor, how many hours do you clock in during the day? I don't count. Really? <laughs> it, it starts in the morning uh, and uh, it depends on uh, the day. Sometimes it may end up at 6 p.m., sometimes it may go on till dinner with some visitors or some other doctors. Tell us more about the journey of Manipal Hospitals in the sense, the significant milestones that have been clocked. So, it's actually one of the oldest uh, healthcare groups in India. The original uh, medical education enterprise started in 1952 with Dr. TMA Pai founding Kasurba Medical College in Manipal. And that has grown into a 2,000 bedded hospital and it is one of the best medical schools in the country. Where we are standing right now is corporate part of Manipal uh, group, which is corporate hospitals, Manipal hospitals. And this started in 2005. So over the last 10 years, we have grown to nearly 5,500 beds. We have 16 hospitals across the country with a lot of uh, dominance in Karnataka presence in Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, Goa, and we recently have a hospital in Jaipur as well. So Manipal has grown significantly in terms of both the medical education piece, which is mm -hmm. a separate entity, right. and the corporate hospitals, which I am responsible for. Dr. Bakshi, medical technology is growing leaps and bounds, and before you even read it, it's outdated at times. Uh, what are the technological advancements that you're seeing in the world that you have been able to bring in uh, to the Manipal hospitals? So when I was a medical student in the 80s, we used to have a thick register book called Index Medicus, which listed all the papers that were published that month. That is now all computerized. And you'll be surprised to learn that almost 100 new research papers get published every day around the world. So the bottom line of technology advancement is that we know more. We know more about disease, we know more about uh, patients, we know more about demographics, and that knowledge is leading to technology as well. Right. So uh, we can diagnose diseases much better. We have high-end uh, MRI machines, we have PET-CT machines which do nuclear medicine tests right. of, of the brain, uh, and, and so on and so forth. So there's a whole panoply of diagnostic equipment which allows doctors to understand what's happening in the body very carefully. So that's one. I think the second thing is our ability to make changes in the human body has all, have also in, improved and increased dramatically. Mm -hmm. So I trained as a neurosurgeon. Right. Uh, but today uh, we can do a brain operation without even opening the skull. There is something called a gamma knife, for example. Mm -hmm. There is, a, I'll just give you some examples. There is a robotic right. surgery uh, possibility. There are uh, interventional techniques by which through a small puncture in the femoral artery or a radial artery, you can go and fix the heart. So that's how doctors put stents inside the heart. So this is almost like science fiction. This, this, uh, 20 yeah. years ago, uh, one could not have imagined that all of this would have become possible. But today it is actively practiced in this hospital where you're standing right now. Doctor, how challenging is it to manage a multi-speciality hospital? It comes with its own dynamics. You have technological advancements, you have inflow of patients, you have uh, highly skilled professionals and paramedical staff. How do you manage all that? So, you know, for us, everything starts with the patient. And we deal with every patient as a human being. Just to give you a sense, we have almost 75,000 patients work through our system every month. So every day, nearly two, three thousand patients will come 
be seen by a doctor, get admitted, get operated, and it's, so it's a very high volume system. That makes some challenges, right? So <laughs> we have to uh, individually greet everybody. We have to recognize who they are. We have to make sure that they get the directions to go to the right doctor. We have to make sure that they don't have to wait. Many hospitals end up having this problem that between every intervention of a doctor or lab, you may have three, four hours of waiting time. So uh, the summary of what we do is we measure everything. We, we deploy a lot of technology mm -hmm. to understand, starting from a website, who came on a website, what were they looking for, and did they get what they wanted. Now, today you can go on a website and get an appointment. So we have created almost like a web check-in system. Right. You get an appointment online, and you pay straight. online, right. you go directly to your doctor. So you don't have to stand in line to pay somebody 500 rupees. Uh, so that's the kind of technological innovation we are doing in patient flows. Another uh, managerial challenge, as you mentioned, is we have thousands of doctors. We have thousands of nurses. But what we try to do more and more is that doctors must collaborate with each other. A typical patient will be, say, for example, a 65-year-old male right. with a heart attack, with a kidney problem, with some past history of spinal injury. Now, this person has to be seen by a cardiologist, by a nephrologist, by probably an endocrinologist because he's likely to have diabetes, right. and for sure by some neuro neurological specialist because he has had a spine surgery. So now all of these doctors have to work together. They have to have information about the patient. They have to have information about the disease, what right. other doctors have been doing. Hmm. So we create technology platforms which enable doctors to collaborate so that all of them can converge on a patient have a common point of view of treatment mm -hmm. so that it's not lost in translation. Many, many patients in hospitals complain that doctors don't know what they are doing. Yeah. E one doctor does not understand what the other one is doing. So we have sort of uh, yeah. overcome that challenge by creating technology systems by which each doctor has complete information about the patient and can talk to each other not via email, but even through SMS-based systems and WhatsApp type of systems, right. so that they can communicate well with, uh, with uh, each other. So that's very important. It goes yeah. back to improving the uh, management of patients. And before I let you go, Doctor, uh, one last question about what do you see as the next benchmark for Manipal hospitals? So uh, we want to be the most respected and the most uh, sought after destination, both for doctors to work in and for patients to come and seek that care. So we want to push ahead on better quality of care. We want to push ahead on more research programs emanating from our doctors. We want to push ahead on deploying latest technologies in making the lives of our patients comfortable. Thank you so much for talking to us, and I wish you all the best for all your plans. All we saw today how technology is advancing and is being embraced by modern medicine. In the next episode of Manipal Hospital presents the changing face of medicine, we look at the more human aspect of medical sciences. Stay tuned.